Hello everybody, welcome back to another edition of Copy Chats with me, your host Wei Lin. And I got an awesome topic for you today. Today we're going to talk about the uh, proposed merger between two of in, uh, Southeast Asia's largest tech unicorns, Grab and Gojek. Uh, for those of you who are not from Southeast Asia, uh, these two companies are the Uber of Southeast Asia. Grabs so are originally from Malaysia, Gojek uh, originally from Indonesia. Both of them are all over the place now in all the different countries. And uh, right now, in the talk of the town, uh, that they're going to have a merger, but that's only the start of the story. So uh, there was going to be, there was talk about a merger going on, you know, and you can see that this is reported in uh, 19 October, but in uh just a few days ago right six days ago gojek has decided to you know change tack and go talk to tokopedia which is indonesia's largest e-commerce platform uh so it's basically the amazon of indonesia and they're huge they're worth something like seven billion us dollars and gojek no slouch themselves are you know valued at about 10 billion dollars and now they're engaged in talks, merger talks for Indonesia's biggest merger deal ever. That is quite something. But, you know, you'd be rightly looking at this and thinking, well, but what happened? Weren't, you know, uh, Gojek going to merge with this other company, Grab? So that was, that was what they were talking about. But this thing came out of nowhere, Gojek and Tokopedia, right? Even on Bloomberg, you can see here. Uh, late as December 2nd. Grab and Gojek closing on terms for merger. It was, it seemed like it was so close. Grab and Gojek have made substantial progress in working out a deal to combine their businesses in what would be the biggest internet merger in Southeast Asia, according to people with knowledge of the talks. The region's two most valuable startups have narrowed their differences of opinion, though some parts of the agreement still need to be negotiated said the people asking not to be named because the talks are private. So what are we to make of all this? All right, so here we are. Um, let me start you off by saying that obviously um, a Grab and Gojek merger would encounter a lot of regulatory resistance because those are the only two ride hailing uh, companies in Indonesia and you know throughout the whole of Southeast Asia essentially and that would create, you know, one mono uh, monopoly. And of course, uh, all, all of this would be resisted by, you know, the competition authorities in their respective countries. And I think that would certainly be the case in Indonesia as well, right? Uh, in addition, so that, that's a big hurdle to, to clear for the companies, even with the best intentions that they want to merge so that, you know, their investors can get some money back and their uh, founders can, you know, have a nice big fat payout. They have to clear that hurdle and it's really difficult but you know strange things have happened before so that's not all though uh both of these companies are now turning into super apps so these apps uh they not only uh allow you to hail rides they also allow you to do um all kinds of fancy things let's see You can order uh, food, you know, can order services. Where is it? Let me show you. Yep, here we go. On demand services for transport, payment, and so on. Right, go ride, go send, go car, go mark, go food. Go... There's just so many. And I'm going to skip away before this, you know, drives us a little crazy. So the chances of a merger don't seem all that high right now when you look at it that way. Oh, also see here on the ken.com, it's, it's reported that they've been in talks since late 2019, right? That's a big, big problem. Um, so they, they, with their super app features, they, there's no compatibility. If you're a vendor, if you're a business that's on the Gojek app, 
with post merger, you know, it would be a big technical undertaking to merge the two. It just would. It just would. Right? No question about it. And you probably end up having two apps for a very long time before one, you know, unified app is launched somehow. Um, so chances don't seem all that good for a merger, right? Once you understand that these are just really big um obstacles clear. Now, business has been really good due to COVID though. Right. So prior to COVID, of course, you know, the landscape was very competitive and uh, everybody was just going along with business as usual. But because of COVID, all the food ordering, grocery deliveries, you know, all these just went through the roof. You know, they just like skyrocketed. And we know that's the case for Amazon as well, which did tremendously well in this pandemic. So the biggest driver, the biggest impetus <clears throat> for the merger just totally changed. Right, all that pressure for that merger now is uh, transformed, and actually, t business is very good for all parties right now. And on top of that, right, Tokopedia is now in the picture. So Gojek, in their desire to uh, you know find a way out, get a deal of some sort, start talking to Tokopedia. Oh, sorry, that's not the one. Right here we go. Uh, Gojek, Tokopedia, yeah, in merger talks. So I think this is a smoke screen though. See, a merger is tra attractive because stiff competition uh, is killing the profits of Grab and Gojek respectively. And merger with Tokopedia, you know, takes that big problem of uh, losing money and outsources it to Tokopedia. If Gojek merges with Tokopedia, Tokopedia essentially has to foot the bill for all the fighting with Grab. And I don't think that they have any interest in funding a war of attrition, you know, with Grab that will slowly just kill both companies, slowly. So Gojek would have to offer very attractive terms for Tokopedia to even think about a real merger, right? Uh, investors and founders would just be loath to give away large chunks of value to Tokopedia. But they may not have a choice because Tokopedia would have to get a really nice deal for them to actually be interested at all to take on the problems that uh, Gojek is facing. Right. And then, yes, now we can see uh, the next piece, which is that Tokopedia has also been considering uh, going for a listing on NASDAQ. Right. They hired uh, Morgan Stanley and Citigroup people manage a listing. So what they want to do though, uh, is to merge with Bridgetown Holdings. That's a special purpose acquisition company or blank check company backed by billionaires, Richard Lee, richest man in Hong Kong, I think, and Peter Thiel, uh, founder of PayPal. So that would be the, the quickest way for Tokopedia to get a listing on NASDAQ. <clears throat> A uh, special purpose acquisition company, right? For those who don't know, uh, it has no business in and of itself, right? Instead, it offers companies like Tokopedia a quick way to get uh, listed on the stock exchange. And in this case for Tokopedia, to get listed in NASDAQ, you know, US stock exchange. And traditionally, there's a long, tedious process uh, with lots of audits, lots of approvals, uh, lots of reports before NASDAQ will formally approve that application. But if you're merging with uh, a company that's already on NASDAQ, well, then you just have to satisfy uh, Bridgetown Holdings' own criteria for the merger. And since their whole purpose is to merge with a valuable company and give it access to NASDAQ, well, that would be a lot easier. So why would Tokopedia talk to Gojek about a merger while also talking to Bridgetown Holdings for a listing via SPAC? Now, that's, that's the fun question. The better question might be, why wouldn't you? provided that you are serious about closing, you know, either deal. If you have ever bid for a, a deal, a sale, you know, as a business owner, you're trying to sell something to a customer, you know how much you hate to compete against other bidders for a deal, right? Multiple companies want to sell the same, you know, batch of things to the buyer and everybody has to give their price and you just hate it because, you know, you, you want to be competitive, but you also don't want to, uh, you know, eat into your profits too much. And that, that leads to a great situation for the customer, but it's terrible for, uh, the business, you know, making the sale. 
So there's immense pressure to quote a low price to improve your chances, but yeah, you stand to make less money. And Tokopedia are in that perfect, wonderful position because they are the customer here. They have already shown how serious they are about a SPAC listing because you can see here the headline of the news reads that they have hired uh, Morgan Stanley and Citigroup uh, advisors you know, for this process. They are already in a win-win situation. They could get an attractive deal um, from Gojek, right? And thus, they would be the biggest tech company in the region by far, right? Or they could go for the NASDAQ route via SPAC and get the listing that their leadership has already seriously invested time and money in. They've shown that they're really serious about it and it's in the news and they put down lots of money because these are really expensive consultants, right? So either way, Tokopedia is going to win. You just, do I win this way or do I win that way? Now, what they could not do though, actually, is do both simultaneously. And I'll tell you why. Uh, merging with Gojek would certainly, you know, no question about it, throw their finances into disarray. Because, you know, how do you forecast the future? How do you place a value on, you know, the th the assets that you acquired? Would uh, Bridgetown Holdings be okay with it? Would they be happy to accept your valuation? So all of these things, would they be happy with, you know, your, your projection of how a combined company would operate in the future and how far along that would be? There's already so much uncertainty, you know, for a company like Bridgetown Holdings to to do that transaction with uh, Tokopedia on a normal day because, you know, they would say, oh, Tokopedia is so far away, it's in Indonesia, we don't really know the market, you know, we just uh, try to narrow down the problem so we can identify, you know, the opportunities and problems as best we can. But if at the same time, you're going to do a big merger, the biggest in history, you know, for Indonesian uh, tech companies, wow, that's certainly going to kill the deal because it's just too much complexity. It'll take too much time. There's too much uncertainty. Right. So back to Grab and Gojek. Now, and I think this is not flattering for them. Go Gojek is clearly the more impatient of the two companies. Their home ground of Indonesia, you know, is being slowly chipped away at by Grab, who have, you know, started to enter Indonesia. So time is not on their side in the negotiations with Grab. Now, once we understand that Grab is actively looking for a way out, uh, and that Grab is slow, sorry, once we understand that Gojek is slowly, uh, is actively looking for a way out and that Grab is slowly entering Gojek's uh, home market, we can see that Gojek is not optimistic about its ability to compete, which is why they would, you know, uh, enter into negotiations with different parties. So with each month that passes without a deal and, you know, Grab will increase its presence in Indonesia. And Tokopedia will inch, you know, further towards a stock market listing. Only Gojek, poor Gojek, you know, seems caught in two minds about what to do for its future. So that's my take on the matter. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Hope you re I really hope you enjoyed it because uh, this is the first time I've talked about uh, business matter in uh, quite a while. Now, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. You know, uh, it really helps. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you. Thank you for watching. Talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.